Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has begun. This is your not-so-humble correspondent, Robert Black, ringside with the unconquerable John Stone and, of course, the outlaw Jackson White. And we are here at Slammin' Shriners. It is going to be an awesome night, John. Oh, yeah, and we're kicking things off with this big gauntlet, this battle for the Shriners Cup that we have set up over the last several months of events. Of course, last time you saw that... Bo Sawyer is no longer in this matchup. He lost his spot in that fatal four-way. But in the ring right now is the man who won last year's tournament, Justin Myers. There is one reason why I am here tonight, and I am holding it in my hands. In my hands is the 2015 inaugural Shriner's Cup trophy that I won last year right in this very building. And it sucks that I can't defend it tonight because of injury. But I thought about it, but I thought about it. And this cup is just more than a trophy with a plaque. This is the slamming for Shriners Kids Shriners Cup trophy. This, this trophy represents every Shriner family, every Shriner kid that has fought the fought, gotten knocked back down, and back to their feet and was stronger by the end of it. That is what the Shriners Cup is. There are guys back there that are willing to fight and bleed for this because they want to look and be looked up upon by the Shriners kids so they can be the Shriners champion. That is why tonight, no matter who wins the Shriners Cup, I will personally hand deliver the new Shriners Cup trophy to the winner. And no matter who they are, they deserve all of your applause. And I love you. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to Chris and welcome to your Shriners Cup opening match. Make some noise! This is your Shriners Cup gauntlet match. Elimination style. Weighing at 287 pounds, from Chicago, Illinois, the mastermind, Bobby Rogers! Well, John, we are off and running here, and the mastermind, Bobby Rogers, headed to the ring, and he may be one of the favorites to take this cup tonight. Look at that imposing figure, the mastermind Bobby Rogers. He has done through a lot and gone through a lot to make it here to the Shriners Cup tonight. And you got that. You know, guys, let me tell you something. It is an absolute travesty that the Mayhem Ministry is not represented in this match. You know, you got to believe that I would be in there winning this match if it wasn't for that reckless jabroni, Big T. Well, that's yet to be proven, I guess. Might be going through a little bit of technical difficulty here with Joey O'Reilly's entrance. Well, uh, Mr. O'Reilly may be... Maybe just wanting to warm up this capacity crowd a little bit, and they are... Yeah, I can't tell if it's technical difficulties or if he's just waiting it out. The well, crowd here going crazy for Bobby. Oh, Joey O'Reilly's making them sweat, John Stone. He's making them sweat. Could be a little bit of mind games. Maybe trying to take the other competitors out of it. Well, possibly some psychological warfare. But I have to tell you, Joey O'Reilly is a fantastic competitor. And I believe he is on his way down now. 
This young man could be the sleeper in this gauntlet match. But with all the talent in this ring, it is unpredictable, to say the least. And that is just the way I like it. And here he comes. You're talking about Joey O'Reilly. You're talking about a man who's comfortable with getting as high as he possibly can, heading up into the sky. He plays that top rope game like no man can. A high flyer's dream, to be sure. And he's going to have a chance to prove his medal here tonight and possibly get the medal of that cup as well. Do you ever come off the top rope, Jackson? Oh, no, that I don't have to come off the top rope, John Stone. I punch people in the face. You want to try? No, I'm okay. Well, Outlaw, you are uh, injured. If I do have to remind you, you might not want to, uh, to get into physical violence at this point in time. Oh, I'm still stronger with my left hand than John Stone is with both of his, Rob Black. And you too. You want to come down here and try me? That's all right, sir. That's the offer right. stands, boys. The offer stands. Did you have to put me in the middle? Oh, that wasn't my call. He is going to have a lot to overcome in this bout. He is in there with uh, four other men who are extraordinarily talented. Oh, it's not just the competitors he has to try and overcome. Let's not forget the fact that because of the man that's sitting on my left over here, this young kid is still nursing some injured ribs, trying to get over the injured ribs that the ministry had a part in giving to him. John Stone, let me tell you, it should be Jay the Tank Oleander having that kid's spot. He's lucky that we've let him go and put our focus on the tag team championships because if we hadn't, he wouldn't be here tonight, I assure you. And now the mood changes as Krauser stepping down the aisle now. And I have to tell you, John Stone, this guy is a frightening individual. He's a freak. No doubt about it. This guy is a freak. And if you want to talk about toughness, let's talk about toughness. Let's talk about the man has something made out of duct tape sitting on top of his head. That is a duct tape mask. You know how painful it is to pull duct tape off of your bare skin. This man pulls it off of his face. Whether Krauser feels pain or not, we will never know. Weir, one half of the Windy City Saints, and both he and his tag partner are going to have a full plate tonight. One going for this magnificent cup, and the other one going for the New Wave Pro Heavyweight title. There is a lot on the line for both those guys tonight, and Travis Weir is about to represent. Well, when it comes to Travis Weir, and it comes to matches such as this, where cups are on the line, Travis Weir does have a winning record in the past. Maybe not in this particular company, but he has won a prestigious cup in the past in a tournament much like this one. I believe all the combatants are out here in this matchup, and we are about to get things underway. Travis Weir is the good-looking guy. He likes to dance a little bit. Nobody's going to put that past him. Hey, and the mastermind showing respect for it. But uh, once that bell rings, it's every man for himself, even though this is tag rules. 
Uh, exactly. Two men will start off in the ring. It's elimination style. Once you are pinned or submitted, you go to the back. The match continues until we are down to one man. Well, that's right. And Joey O'Reilly right now not wanting any part of the mastermind Bobby Rogers. And this audience is letting him know it. You know, I really like the strategy by Joey O'Reilly here. Why should he be getting in there, getting himself eliminated early in the match? No, you stay out on the floor, let the trash take itself out. You come in and pick up the pieces. Very smart strategy. I like it. It looks like we're going to start off here with Bobby Rod. Weir. Don't forget, it was just about a month or so ago on the campus of Indiana State University. Mastermind Bobby Rogers gained a submission victory over Travis Weir. That's right. There is a whole lot at stake for both egos and for metal as we got a collar and elbow tie up and the mastermind backing Weir up into the ropes. I'm surprised at that show of strength and we get a clean break. We may not see that again in this match, but the ma whoa, and the mastermind oh right after O'Reilly again. Maybe got a bone to pick with him somewhere. Referee Mike Underwood assigned to take on this matchup, the poor guy. Yeah, I do not envy his position. As to get in between just the mastermind and Travis Weir alone is bad enough, but to have these other three involved in this match, anything could happen. Backed up into the ropes now. Weir with the upper hand and a clean break for the mastermind. And he Whoa. goes after O'Reilly. <laughs> Little bit of shake, rattle, and rolls. <laughs> Joey O'Reilly not taking too kindly to that. Travis Weir is a guy that likes to have fun. He likes to go out dancing. And he likes to take psychological advantage of his opponents at the same time. And right now we get a dance-off impromptu style. You know, this kind of stuff is not condoned by the Mayhem Ministry. And if we see too much more of it, we may have to do something about it. Yeah, I've seen the book of stuff that's endorsed by the Mayhem Ministry. I think it had comp on the front of it or something like that. Well, it's oh, you got jokes, John. Well, it's certainly not on my reading list as a, a, a test of strength breaking down into a dance once again. The Mastermind and Travis Weir messing with the minds of all three of their opponents right now. Messing with the mind, or is he actually having a little bit of fun? It I mean, if he's messing with his mind and he's trying to lull him into a sense of relaxation before he jumps on him, I'm going to have to say that's a masterful move. Well, it could be both. You know what I think it's doing? I think it's anger in that man right there that Travis Weir is in his hand to. You talk about Patrick Crowther, you talk about a change in the game. That's a man who doesn't feel, he doesn't care. And this kind of shenanigans doesn't like. And here he goes. Oh, here, yeah, indeed, I'm forced to agree with the outlaw as Krauser taking absolute command right off the bat, and he decked Michael Kirkman right off the apron, but Krauser dumped as well by the mastermind. Kirkman. Kirkman's getting some shots in. The rookie is going after Krauser, hand and fist. That might be a big mistake as the big guy fighting back. Oh, good Lord. 300 pounds. What is he going to do? Oh, oh O'Reilly from the blind side. Super kick right to the face. Hey, this is just what I told you. He's going to fly. Oh, Incoming. Right. Over the top. Train wreck right here at ringside. Mike Underwood is beside himself. Unbelievable action here at Slammin' for Shriners. High risk, high reward for Joey O'Reilly. He took the risk and it paid off. Can he make it capitalize now? Yeah, but you know, you notice Joey O'Reilly is the one that went further back towards the entranceway. Krauser is now back in the ring. The two legal men, Krauser and Bobby Rogers. After that impact, I'm surprised that both of those guys could get up off the concrete, let alone get back into the ring, as now Krauser trying to choke the life out of the mastermind. Referee got to a count of four. And all disqualifications and count of... Oh! Legal in this match. Somebody is going to walk away with that cup. I we like are. the raw aggression by Krauser, boys. I love it. And a leg drop right across the throat. Wait a minute, he could have it here. He could be eliminated. No, only a two count. The mastermind just barely getting out of there. Well, gentlemen, Krauser 
is definitely a favorite in this match if it continues to be a brawl because nobody can do it better. Oh, Krausers were the man in ministry's money. Let me tell you, this man, he doesn't feel he's a monster. He's and the kind of guy that we hire to do our dirty work. And now an Irish whip to the far side buckles by Crut. No, cranking in with a wrist lock. You got to wonder if this is a little bit of a bad situation, though, because the longer they spend time in that ring, the more wore out they're going to get. You would think that maybe by tag rules, tags to the other guy would be a smart thing. Well, all five of these men are going to expend a tremendous amount of energy just because this is an elimination match. All of these Wait men a are going to be tested. Did you see that? Bobby went to tag Joey O'Reilly and he dropped off the ring. Well, O'Reilly... O'Reilly... Uh, had a, a little animosity early on with uh, with the mastermind, but now Michael Kirkman in there against Krauser, and the tag made to Travis Weir. Wait, they're going to do a little double team. Kirkman with oh. the clothesline against the buck and a running splash by Weir. I already what? told you once, Travis Weir is over 300 pounds. There's a stomp to the back of the head. Almost a curb stomp, and he almost got the three. Unbelievable as Krauser took a heck of a shellacking from both Kirkman and Weir. Suplex going to be attempted, but no, blocked by Krauser. I don't know. If Krauser is able to reverse this, I may just eat my tie right here. No, please don't do that. I don't have barbecue sauce. Oh, good Lord, what impact. He could have it right here if he goes for the pin. No, he's, he's going for the tag. He said go up. Michael Kirkman, the rookie, going to the top turnbuckle. We're holding him down. Frog splash. Could have it. Only a two count, just barely. Underwood right on top of that, and he's going to have to be this action hot and heavy here at Slammin' for Shriners. You know, we talk about this Michael Kirkman being a rookie, but don't forget, in one of his very first matches, he took New Wave Pro Champion Mark Vandy straight to the limit, and now there's a tag. A disrespectful one at that as Joey O'Reilly did not like that at all. That's playing with his strategy. He needs to return the favor, boys. And he may very well have a chance to as O'Reilly tagging in the mastermind in the same disrespectful manner. Those kind of chops just breed animosity and all five of these guys are going to be very angry with each other before this is over. Well, look, I may not like the man's tactics. I may not like the man's attitude, but I do have to agree, amazingly so, with Jackson over here. I have to agree with it. Well, the outlaw Jackson White, a great competitor in his own right, although injured. And now Krauser, whipped to the far side, no reversal. Onto the mastermind and a running clothesline. I think Krauser may have hurt himself. He may be the only person that can. And now a whip again into the buckles. The mastermind slamming into them. I think that Krauser's a little, been knocked a little loopy there. You can see that he was shaking his head in frustration. Well, Krauser, we don't oh! know what's going on in that mind as he hits the turnbuckle hard. No, the no, mastermind. I think he went over the turnbuckle. He hit the steel post. You may be right. As Krauser knocked for a loop, the mastermind with a running boot to the jaw. Boot to the face, could have it here. And he got it. Oh! That just cost the Mayhem Ministry a lot of money. Yeah, well, they're called banks. I don't think it's going to be that bad for you to get some more. And Joey O'Reilly ready to get some action here. Well, the mastermind has a way of doing that to people. Oh! Once you underestimate him, and Joey O'Reilly just did. Close line city from the big man as the mastermind picking up. O'Reilly scoop slam, maybe. Well, the mastermind has got the size and power advantage over Joey O'Reilly. It only takes one move. And the mastermind just dumps him center ring. But you know Bobby Rogers, he has always got a plan. What's he going for here? Well, he's dragging O'Reilly across into the corner, and it looks like the mastermind may fly. This oh. is something I rarely see. He's taking a page out of O'Reilly's book. Oh. Beautiful leg drop right across the throat for the cover. No. Joey's still able to kick out a two after that 
And what's Krauser doing? Krauser. What a, why is the Underwood is right in his face? Now wait a minute. Wait, did you think Joey had to go to hell? O'Reilly had a chain. You could see it right there. You can't prove that. Can't well, prove it. It's right there. Well, Underwood can't prove it. He didn't see it. Oh, O'Reilly no. on the top. Oh. Row, 450. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Krauser grabbing Bobby Rogers' foot. What happened? I think Krauser has lost his mind. Krauser's just trying to even the odds. Oh, wait a minute. O'Reilly going up again. Oh, he wanted him to hit a second one. Wait. Oh, that's what he was doing. He was trying to make sure that Bobby couldn't kick out. Unbelievable. Krauser with a distraction that allowed Joey O'Reilly to take the mastermind out of this match. Oh, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. That's exactly what he was doing. He got caught the first time by the referee, but the second time it worked, and they're fighting to the back now. Oh, good Lord, as Krauser and the mastermind go up the aisle fighting, we've got O'Reilly and Kirkman in the center of the ring right here and a rake of the eyes. This is where O'Reilly is going to come into play, where he's going to start basically his arrogance. If, I, if there's a lack of another term, his arrogance is going to start coming into play. Nah, Joe. O'Reilly needs to get back on his strategy. Drag in, have a sweet and stand outside and let Kirkman and Weir tear each other apart. What a horrendous chop as flesh met bone. And now O'Reilly taunting Travis Weir. That was probably a big mistake as now Michael Kirkman coming back. But he eats a running punch right to the jaw. Unbelievable. And O'Reilly with one to Weir as well. Punch to Weir. Unbelievable as now Joey O'Reilly large and in charge, but Kirkman firing back on him. That's underneath right it. hand. Wait a minute. He's going to try and climb up the rope, spin around. Oh! Kirkman with a beautiful tornado DDT. Can he have it? No, just gets a shoulder up at two. Travis Weir's still down on the outside trying to fight to get back up. Oh, Joey O'Reilly, he's got to get up and tag Travis Weir in. He's not doing well right now. Oh, oh and a oh, Superman Riley punch. With another Superman right between the eyes. Kirkman may be done for, but O'Reilly not done yet. No, he's going back up top to his comfort zone. Could be looking for maybe a moonsault. O'Reilly went for broke and came up short. And there's the pin. He could have it. He could. He got it. The rookie scores the pin. Kirkman nails Joey and he eliminates him from the match. Joey O'Reilly went for broke and came up short. And now it is Kirkman and Travis Weir, the rookie and the Windy City Saint, one on one for that piece of gold. I can't believe this. Joey O'Reilly is still down on the outside. I don't think he realizes exactly what happened. Well, he knocked himself for a loop. That is for sure. Oh, and they're going crazy at it. It's fisticuffs. There is no respect, no mercy left in this match. Uh-oh. Powerbomb, come on. Oh! We're planted Kirkman center ring. This could be all she wrote. He kicked out of the jackknife. Good Lord, I can't believe it. Michael Kirkman is still in this matchup, still competing. We are still live. Joey O'Reilly has made it back to his feet, and he is calmly walking to the back. I think it finally sunk in what just happened. Travis running in, and he ducks out of the way, kick to the midsection. Going for the Tornado DDT, if he can hit it. Oh! He caught all of it. Unbelievable. And what? a victory. <laughs> With. You're going to have to talk to the commissioner, Mr. White, and uh, you're going to have a hell of a time making that stick as right now Michael Kirkman basking in the glory of the Shriners Cup 2016, and you've got to believe that this is the greatest moment of his life, John Stone. Michael Kirkman has had... Travis 
and saying, you're the better man here tonight. You got me, kid. The career that Michael Kirkman has had since coming to New Way Pro, he has had match after match after match. He took Mark Vandy to the limit several months ago. He suffered through the vicious attack from the Mayhem Ministry with the broken ribs. He brought it all here tonight to become the Slammin' for Shriners Cup champion right in there with last year's winner, Justin Myers. I can't believe it. You see Myers and Kirkman, two tremendous athletes, two true champions, and Michael Kirkman, the rookie, makes good tonight. We will return. just went up my spine as the monster enters this arena. Congo Kong may very well walk away with the Crossroads title tonight. This is going to be the biggest challenge that Sam Knight has faced. And as much as I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen, I got to ask you, Mr. Jackson White, the man who's been basically taking pot shots at Congo Kong ever since you interfered in Congo's match with the Monster Abyss several weeks ago. What's it like to be out here with the real deal? Well, you know, you guys may recall I have a victory over Congo Kong. You remember that, right, John Stone? Baby. You see, it's been a while since Congo Kong has been in New Wave Pro. As with the no line, he's been afraid of the ministry. Well, he is back now, and he is gearing up to take the title away from the man that's about to make his introduction. Absolutely, as Sam Knight, the self-proclaimed right hand of God, with that beautiful new Crossroads title belt. And I tell you, he is going to have to fight tooth and nail to keep that tonight. Of course, you can hear Jackson White talking about how he hates Sam Knight. The ministry has history with Sam Knight as well, recent history. You know, both of these men... Well, Jackson White, I do have to ask you one very important question. You have been on the bad side of both of the men in this ring right now. Why would you want to antagonize either one of these men any more than you already have? Look, Robert Black, it's about sending a message. The Mayhem Ministry, we run New Wave Pro Wrestling. Anyone that comes through here has to answer to us. It is the first book challenger.
Referee Ollie Tharp showcasing the brand new Crossroads Championship belt, which was awarded to Sam Knight at our last event several weeks ago. Well, I did love the old belt, a classic indeed, but the new one is spectacularly beautiful, and one of these men are going to walk away with it. Here we go. This is going to be one heck of a fight here, Sam Knight and Congo Kong. Look at the height advantage that Congo has over Sam Knight, not just the size advantage. When you look at somebody like Congo Kong, you most definitely look are looking at a monster. Well, John, you definitely called it earlier as Congo Kong gives a headbutt and two vicious right hands to Sam Knight. You called it before this is going to be the greatest challenge for that title that oh. he's ever had as Kong tries to cave in the chest of the right hand of God. Uh, now you see Sam trying to fight back. Sam has been a fighting champion ever since he first won that Crossroads title. He has turned back challenges from competitors of all shapes and sizes. And don't forget, just a few months ago on the campus of Indiana State University, Sam victory over our current New Way Pro champion, Mark Vandy. That's right. Sam Knight has not been a closet champion by anyone's measure, but right now he is in the vice-like grip of Congo Kong, and he's got to get out of it. He's trying to. The elbows to the midsection, trying to find a way to back out of it. Kong pressed up against the ropes. Whip, no. The big man catches it and right back into the vice-like grip of that headlock. Now, Jackson, I hate to ask you this because I feel I already know the answer, but how would you have fared in a match with either one of these men? I doubt one of them up, John. Look at that. I was right. Well, right now, the, uh, the right hand of God with a head scissors on the big man. I don't know how long that's going to last. Kong with unbelievable strength. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Unbelievable how he got out of that. And now they're catching each other with a stare of the eyes. As both men back at a vertical base. And outlaw Jackson White against one of oh. the... Uh, both of these men have extraordinary power and despair. How in the Lord's name could you strategize against these two behemoths? You know, when you're fighting behemoths like this, sometimes you have to dig deep into the playbook and use some of your dirtier tricks. That's what Sam Knight or Congo Kong needs to do. Go below the belt, put the other man away. Well, when the title's on the line, you can't argue too strongly against that as Kong is caught in a, a hammer lock by night and can't seem to maneuver. And now the headlock by night, maybe trying to, to squeeze the temples, but I don't know if that's going to be effective against Kong. Irish whip to the far side. Oh. oh. Whoa, look at that. Both men not moving an inch, and Kong calling for it again. Knight off the ropes, ramming together. Both men not giving any quarter. Well, remember, we said that Congo Kong has the size advantage. This man is over 400 pounds. Oh. And he just used that size advantage. Took a shot against Knight, against the rope. Oh. A beautiful chop right between the shoulders and a one-footed drop kick low. Well, this could be it. We could have a new champion. He's going for the pin. Oh, that was close. Sam Knight barely getting his shoulder up. Kong, an awesome presence inside the squared circle. And the title definitely in jeopardy. You talk about Kong being an awesome presence. You know I hold a victory over him? Did I tell you guys that? You did indeed. Yeah, you might have the was a little bit photoshopped, if I'm not mistaken, but right now... You can't prove that, Robert Black! Well, I certainly don't have the photos with me as Kong with an iron... No! Oh. Knight catching him with a boot, clothesline, but couldn't get the big man down. Off we the ropes again, Knight catching him right across the chest. We talk about the size difference between these two, but Sam Knight loves to utilize the spear, and he can come off of those ropes, nail one spear, and that's all it would take to put Congo Kong away. Well, that remains to be seen if he can get it. Oh! Close line in the corner by Knight. Trying to wear the big man down, and he's doing all, giving it all he's got. Knight knows what's on the line here. You gotta wonder, though, if Congo Kong is trying to him into a rope-a-dope type situation. Throw everything you've got at me, but it's just going to tire you out and allow me to regain my composure up and over to the floor. The 
but Kong is still on his feet. I am amazed that shot didn't put him down to the concrete, but Sam Knight. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes have passed in this match. 15 minute time limit. As oh Knight my God. Oh. But he gets caught by the shoulder. A, a beautiful forearm right to the face. Now Sam Knight down on the outside. The champion certainly ate that forearm as he tried to dive through the ropes. Kong with awesome power again showing and now dragging Knight over to the railing and just jamming his throat right into it. Now the referee's counting him out. Does anybody explain to Kong what numbers are? Does he know to get back in there before the count of 10? Well, I would certainly hope that uh, that the language barrier was breached before this oh. match, but it doesn't really matter tonight at this point as he goes to the steel again. Yo, yeah, and that is solid steel that he's hitting. Smart move on Kong there to break up the pin. Yes. Well, I guess he's a little smarter than I gave him credit for. I still hold a victory over him, though. Did you guys know that? Well, victory or no, Kong is in some deep trouble as right now Knight coming back. I'm surprised after those shots to the railing because, as you know, they're... Oh! oh and again! Kong ricocheting the champion off of the steel. Oh, my gosh! I told you! Over 400 pounds and he's standing on Sam! Oh, Sam Knight in serious jeopardy. The title in serious jeopardy. And as you know, there are no uh, padded barricades here in New Wave Pro. That is all steel that Sam Knight just ate. They're going to have to get this match back in the ring. Well, I'm sure both of these men aware of the count going on. If there is a count out, Sam Knight will retain the title automatically. But I'm sure that Kong is just administering punishment before he fires the champion back inside. You know, I don't often discuss ministry business, boys, but let me tell you something. We've had our eyes on Sam Knight. We've had our eyes on that Crossroads Championship. And you better believe next season. Oh, my goodness. Good Lord. A cannonball against the barricade. Congo Kong is trying to destroy Sam Knight tonight. This may not be just about titles well I'm telling you we're going after whoever the crossroads champion is after tonight when we come back on the FNX network in the fall and I hope these two tear each other apart to the point they're easy pickings come August oh, well quite frankly outlaw whoever survives this I do not envy your position these two are tearing each other limb from limb and the, the ministry numbers advantage aside it's it's going to be a challenge for you oh my gosh what a senton over the top rope assist this oh, could this, be history this is right now be it. this has to be shoulder up in two i cannot believe it and i'm losing my voice out here sam knight surviving everything congo kong has to throw at him he is still the champion what a fighter i was starting to think we were going to have to find some medical attention for sam knight after that vicious cannonball on the outside into the steel shot in here wait a minute kicked out again but how long can it last oh kind of an arrogant cover by kong there he should have hooked the uh oh Wait a minute, look at Sam. Sam Knight, I don't know where he is getting this fortitude. How can he be standing after all of that punishment? It's like the second wind is finally kicking in. Billy Joel's song rings true. You got that right. Sam Knight on the oh! board. But Congo Kong swings for the fences and maybe hit a home run. And look at that, he's standing on the man's back Whoa. over 400 pounds. Whoa. How much more punishment can the, can Sam Knight take? The rep, the ring announcer just announced one minute left in the match. And that could be Sam's only saving grace. Knight picked up. No. Out of the hands of Kong. A Wait reversal. A Wait a minute. He's got him locked in. He plants him on the mat. Unbelievable. Knight for the cover. No. Kick out it. Unbelievable. Anybody These, got a timer? Where are we at on time? I mean, I, I don't have it with me, as, uh, but we know the sands are running out. Sam Knight taking the straps down. He wants to take Kong down now. He wants to plant him with a second one. No, Kong bursting out of it. He's trying to apply a cross face. And he's got it on tight center of the ring. He 
has been great ring positioning right now. We could have a new champion if time will allow it. The referee checking and saying no, Sam Knight not done. But how long? Giving up, he has got this locked dead center in the ring. Kong giving it all he's worth. Time has expired. The time limit has officially expired. 15 minute time limit. That was what was sanctioned and the challenger was on top of the situation, but, but the referee can't count it. We'll have to figure out what's going on here. He's conferring with the ref. It this match is ruled a Oh, it's a draw. Well, Chris Abel giving us the news. There was... Uh, neither one of these men can beat each beat Congo Kong have you guys heard we did yeah we've heard something here the match is a draw I'm sorry but that that's Congo Kong I believe calling for the mic he can't be too happy he had Sam Knight dead center but the time limit expired and that's the contract I don't know if anything can be done oh. Congo's gonna speak Kong not willing to accept the draw. One more time. Hey, I'm all for it. If they want to restart it, let's do this. Let them tear each other apart. Well, these two men have gone pillar to post in this match and thrown out. If they can endure more of this, I will be the most surprised guy in the building. He wants five more minutes. Well, this crowd at Slammin' for Shriners is calling for it. They want to see it. I don't know if we need the commissioner to sanction this. Well, we're checking things out right now. The referee's talking with him. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Whoa, 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 whoa. One second. Call did not come from deep in jungle, blah, 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 and all that. Four times in the draw, I'll tell you what. The, uh, the man, we can't go five more minutes. But, I'm sure she did, but, I will give you another shot at this, and the next time it won't be as easy. Oh, Kong taking a cheap shot. The five more minutes is not going to happen. Sam Knight laid out by Congo Kong. He Congo is making his mark on the champion right now, saying, next time, this comes with me. Well, Sam Knight laid down the gauntlet for Congo Kong, giving him the opportunity of a rematch, and I'd say that is accepted. Well, wait a minute. What in? Oh, the outlaw Jackson White! He got into the face of Congo Kong and he just paid for it. I was going to try and stop it because we didn't need it, but... Oh, good Lord. The outlaw just picked up. And it looks like the outlaw is going to go back to deepest, darkest Africa with the monster. That's one of the best things I've seen all night. What an unbelievable contest.
time limit draw, though it was, Sam Knight, still our crossroads champion. But John Stone, we have not seen the last of this match, but we could very well have seen the last of Jackson White. We will return. The ball contest is set for one more. It is a lumberjack brunch match. <laughs> Introducing the first, weighing at 268 pounds, from Brazil, Indiana, the player for you. Stone, I cannot believe the transformation that Jason Levi, the Painted Warrior, has made here in New Wave Pro. It quite frankly disgusts me. Oh, it's ridiculous. This kid is nothing more than a punk. He likes to put his hands on a woman like Miss Allie. He likes to batter that woman, if it will. And that is exactly why he finds himself in this match here tonight. And I hope he gets his clock cleaned. Well, I can't argue with that one iota. Toxic is going to take a measure of revenge. Win, lose, or draw if he can. Jason Levi may be in for the fight of his natural life here tonight. This is not going to be a catch-as-catch-can wrestling contest. This is a fight. This is not a showcase that you do not mess with family. Not only that, but this is a lumberjack match, which puts in even more of a dangerous element. But I am sure that Toxic is, uh, has only one thing and one thing only in mind, and that is to tear apart the Painted Warrior. The Lumberjacks will soon make their way to the ringside and we will get this match going. They're calling for all the Lumberjacks and here they come. You see Krauser, JD, and the Mayhem Ministry without Jackson White. Who knows where he's at right now? Joey O'Reilly's coming out. T. Thomas Moore, this year's Shriners Cup champion, Not Michael to Kirkman. Maurice the Magnificent. Yep. That's strange guy. Well, we've got a lot of lumberjacks out here, but who knows what or how they're going to affect this contest because these two, I believe want to tear each other apart and here we go but as you mentioned earlier john these two want to a stolen move and uh and uh 
Jason Levi wanting to make the statement right off the bat. It's forearm shots and knees. And as you said earlier, John, this is going to be a fight. And of course, conspicuous by her absence is Miss Alley. I haven't seen her around here today. Well, I don't blame her for wanting to stay away from this. This would this would be highly emotional for her as Levi just dove over the top rope and a swift kick right to the face. This is the beating that Jason Levi has had coming to him for a long time. And now look on the outside. That's what a lumberjack match is all about. That's right. You take your punishment and you get thrown right back in. And Toxic, I am sure, is just itching to get his claws on Jason Levi tonight. They are lumberjacks. They're okay. They sleep all night and they beat people up. No, that doesn't rhyme. Uh, but Levi that one doesn't on the, work. Levi oh, and look, on the, they're going crazy on Levi. Well, a lot of the locker room here in New Wave Pro have had a lot of... Oh! Oh, good Lord. That might not have been the smartest move. Trouser trying to get at Jason Levi. And as I was saying... Wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he hits him with the mask. And that mask has spikes on it, and he just drove them right into the face of Toxic. That was a smart move on the part of Jason Levi. I hate saying it. It was indeed, and Toxic may be out of this right now. It would be a shame for it to... No. Toxic just barely getting out. And, of course, the men on the outside have a history with. Of course, I'm talking about Travis Weir. We've seen the battles that Travis Weir and Jason Levi asked. Yes, and a lot of people in the locker room, including you and I, have an absolute dislike and disgust for the way that he has treated Miss Alley in the recent past. It is just now oh, and a vicious exactly. knee drop right across the face. You see, Jason Levi had an opportunity to not be competing in this match here tonight. Wait a minute. Pin attempt. Only a two count. Toxic he had in dire straits right now. He had an opportunity to go into the main event tonight to fight Mark Vandy for the title. All he had to do at the last event was beat Blake Reed, but he didn't do that. And Miss Alley is one of the reasons for it. And now look at that. Toxic thrown to the outside, but the wrestlers aren't doing anything. Well, Toxic has a lot of friends, more so than Jason Levi at this point. However, uh, he needs to get back into the ring. This is not what a lumberjack match is all about. They should be bringing him in there, quite and frankly. You could see Levi's frustration. He was not happy with that. And a cheap shot by Jason Levi. We're going to be seeing a lot of that, I'm sure. As the painted warrior with control here. But no, Toxic ramming him into the buckles. Shoulder tackles. Oh, and Toxic going for, bringing the straps down, going to bring some pain to Jason Levi. You know, I got to tell you, oh, I have been in this professional wrestling business for going on 12 years. And in that time, I have seen Toxic compete in many different types of matches against many different types of opponents. But I don't think I've ever seen him as enraged and as angry as he is here tonight. Oh! Beautiful drop kick right against the bottom turnbuckle. Toxic driving Levi out and right there to stop him is Travis Weir. I understand exactly the anger that Toxic is going through. Like I said, I'm going on 12 years. I have known Toxic for 12 years. I was there when Miss Alley was still very little, going to little bitty shows, sitting in the front row, hoping to be able to be there. I have seen her treat like this now. Oh. I'm, I'm getting flustered. I'm, I'm messing up my words. I can't stand it. I understand that. Is this action hot and heavy right now? Is Krauser getting his licks in on Levi, but a desperation jawbreaker center ring by the painted warrior puts him back in control. But I have to tell you, John Stone, both of these men are not going to be the same once this is over. This is about revenge. This is about family, about blood. Levi going for a move oh. and nobody home. Unbelievable. As you have to believe that all of the lumberjacks at ringside are not happy with Jason Levi. 
and Toxic taking advantage of this situation. If he can get to his feet, the count going on. Toxic is starting to make his way back up. Levi, the first man up, and now he shoves the ref. That's not a good idea. Definitely not, as enough people hate Levi right now. He doesn't want the referee to do it, too. Knee strikes right to the temple. It's never been past Jason Levi to get himself disqualified in a matchup. Last match against Blake Reed at our last event was made no disqualification. Well, you got to believe that Toxic does not want Jason Levi disqualified in any, any way, shape, or form. He wants to administer as much punishment oh. as he can. What a beautiful shot. Poetry of motion by Toxic. Toxic now back on the offense. You know he's looking to hit that intoxicator, a move that Jason Levi has started using in his repertoire over several weeks. Which was a big mistake. Oh. Fuel to the fire. And Toxic just rolled the face of Jason Levi against the top turnbuckle back a, to his madness. A variation of a gory bomb into the corner. And he got all of it right across Levi's face. And a vicious elbow to the throat. And now just grinding the forearm against the, the eyes and forehead. Uh, Toxic just wanting to dismantle Levi. Yeah, but he's got to try and keep his emotions in check as much as he can. As bad as we want to see him. Just drill Jason Levi in the face. Out of nowhere, Levi with that super kick dropping. Toxic. What? what in good Lord? What the heck? Gravy, have we just seen? Hey, can you get it over here? You explain to me what just happened. I believe our referee just kicked Jason Levi in the face. Even our referee hates the guy. I told you that was a mistake. Oh, he kicks the referee in the face. He rips his shirt off. What? I, that part I don't understand. Wait but a minute. Back in the ring. Toxic went for the gold. And Toxic. he came up empty. Missing with that second round moonsault. We got to get a referee out here. Something's going on. I don't understand it. We, uh, oh, no, they're going crazy. The Lumberjacks have broken loose. We have absolute chaos here at Slammin' for Shriners. They're going crazy. The Lumberjacks have lost their mind. Jason Levi and Toxic have lost their mind. Oh. Backdrop over the top. Jason well, Joey O'Reilly smart enough to get out of the dog pile before it turned into a monster mash. Whoa, Whoa. wait a minute. The mastermind all over Joey O'Reilly's case is he batmouthed him. Now. Oh, what a cheap shot. Oh, wait a minute. They're starting to make their way back. Oh, Toxic is up in the ring. This is bad news. We know uh -oh. that Toxic can fly. Watch out! Good Lord Almighty! Toxic just took down every single lumberjack in this match. The audience saying that was awesome, and I have to concur. Oh, yeah, that's awesome, but there, there's still no referee out here. We don't understand what's going on. Well, there's absolute chaos right now, but that doesn't mean the action has stopped as, as Levi picking up Toxic, trying to get him back inside, but I don't know what good that's going to do. There's nobody to count. Look at the ministry just walking around amongst the bodies down there. Well, you know, that spells trouble anytime you see it. Levi's going for a pin, but there's no referee. No, Levi on top of Toxic, but there's nobody to count. This thing is completely broken loose. As we may have to get some medical attention out here for some of these guys. I mean, well, absolutely. Kirkman's all fighting back on JD. Well, all of those men hit the deck, and they took a suicide dive from Toxic. Look at Kirkman. He's trying to take the fight to JD. Oh, good Lord. Wait a what? minute. Wait a minute. Intoxicator is coming. He hit it. Beautiful. Beautifully executed. Toxic caught all of it. Levi is down in the center. He's down. We still got fighting on the outside. Krauser and Bobby Rogers. The mastermind going after Krauser and rams him into the steps. Big T is still outside. You might want to check him out. He's still got a tag match. 
rematch later. Well, he's calling for somebody, but... He's got the pin, but there's nobody to call it. And Jason Levi is what? down at one. <laughs> Miss Alley coming to the ring. Miss Alley making her first appearance. Wait a minute, she's mycing into the ref. Is she going to become the referee? Oh, this is bad news oh, for this, the Painted Warrior. This is sweet justice. You talk about humiliation, revenge, and well-deserved. I can't believe it. Wait a minute, Toxic is, he's asking for a chair. Asking for a steel chair. I guess he wants to put the postage stamp on this. And I don't blame him one bit. Apparently, Miss Miss to Ram, Ram Levi's head into that chair. This could spell the end for the Painted Warrior right now. Miss Alley, I, I, she has every reason Go in for the it. world to do this. Go for it, Alley. Think of everything he has put you through. Everything that he has done. What? No! And what in good Lord's name have we just witnessed you got to be kidding me! Miss Alley with a cheap shot against Toxic! No! You've got to be kidding! Oh! And a spike DDT! Oh, come on! I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I, John Stone, I am absolutely shocked. Miss Alley just betrayed her blood for the painted warrior, that, that lunatic, that abuser. I, I am absolutely flabbergasted here what is wrong with Miss Alley what kind of control does that man have over her mind toxic laid out in the center of the ring after all that chaos and Jason Levi walking away with the victory and with Miss Alley, that what a sickening display. We'll have to sort this out in the weeks and months to come. We'll be back.
tonight's going to determine. Unfortunately, Frank Wyatt couldn't be here, but I see he found a great partner. I'm straight out of your DM. Get nice to meet you. I want to welcome you. And I wish the best of luck to you guys. Not so much to them, though. Just because you're fat. I don't know. Here is his first, weighing at 450 pounds, from the asylum, Sean Franklin! And his partner, weighing at 310 pounds, from Terre Haute, Indiana, Jay Boutain Olander! And with their manager, Jesse Davis, they are the Mayhem Ministry! And their opponents, weighing first at 384 pounds, from the hills of Kentucky, the High Tech Redneck, Hillbilly Jim! And his partner, weighing at 215 pounds, from Good old boys indeed. The tag titles are on the line. Whoever gets pinfall or submission walks away with that gold, John. Three that we saw earlier. Yes, it is. Well, Commissioner, oh, wait a minute. The Mayhem Ministry all over the good old boys. Jed and Moore caught off guard. Double whip to the far side. Oh, wait a minute. Dosi Toe in the middle of the ring and stereo clotheslines and the ministry bailing. Well, you heard Jackson White earlier before he was taken away by Congo Kong say that they never lost the tag team championship. They have been eagerly to get those titles back around their waist. But yet so does Big T Thomas Moore. Oh, he has a legitimate claim to the tag title. Well, the good old boys are not going to give them room to breathe as Jed and Moore ramming the Mayhem Ministry into the apron. And now, wait a minute, Moore just rammed into the steel post by, by Franklin. And now you got the big man, Jay the Tank Oleander, working over Hillbilly Jed in the ring. And it's not often that you say that Jay the Tank Oleander is in a man bigger, in a ring with a man bigger than him. Well, that's right. Hillbilly Jed, the, the high-tech redneck, is about as big as they come. But neither one of these guys are going to, to back down an inch to big oh. behemoths in there. And you got it. Oh, you got to commend Big T Thomas Moore for thinking of that plan. He knew he had to try and find somebody. Frank Wyatt was not able to be here tonight. Well, he had to find somebody that could try and counterbalance the size factor from Jay the Tank Oleander and Sean Franklin. Well, he's going to need all that size because Sean Franklin and Tank Oleander together are a huge combination in every sense of the word. And both of these men meet in the ring again and nobody moves. Oh, and look at the tank. He's saying, give me another one. Oleander wanting Hillbilly Jed to take his shot off the ropes. That's probably not the brightest of ideas. As He's and coming. again, oh. tank rams right into the high-tech redneck and nothing happens. Oh, he's telling him, you do it to me. He wants the big man to come off the ropes. That's probably... Not a big... Whoa! Oh, and the tank is down! The, the big man took a fall as Hillbilly Jed ran straight through him. And Jed Ouch. with a straight right into the face. One way or another after tonight, we will have tag team champions with no argument, with no fighting, with no bickering here at New Way Pro! What 
a beautiful senton rolling by Hillbilly Jed. This could be could it right it. here. Oh, that was close. Only gains a two count. Tank doing the wise thing and rolling to the outside. I don't blame him. I, I, I'm surprised that he survived that. As we see a sign that says Parker is the greatest referee. And I believe that some of our ringsiders might have prompted what Parker, our referee in this match, did against Jason Lee. Wait a minute. Did you see that? It was a tag to Sean Franklin, but there was a little bit of bickering between those two. Well, I don't blame either one of them for not wanting to get into the ring with Hillbilly Jed. But Jed saying he's going to tag Big T. Well, you know, there is no love lost between Thomas Moore and the Mayhem Ministry, and I'm sure that he wants a piece of whichever member he can get his hands on. Side headlock. And Big T can put the squeeze on. Ironically enough, Big T is the smallest man in this match, which shows you how large these men are. Oh, and look at that, right there on the outside, JG getting involved. Oh, and Thomas Moore took a header. Big T is in serious trouble here as he is in the mauling bare arms of Big Sean Franklin. And a beautiful forearm shot to the chin and chest, basically, of Big T Thomas Moore. But he's fighting back. Everyone's favorite cowboy, as he's called, but he's getting clubbed down by a huge man in there, John. Well, Big T has been through so much over the last several months with the Mayhem Ministry. Sneak attacks, jumping him, having the matches. Big T is one of the main reasons that Jackson White is injured. Well, yes, rammed his shoulder right into the steel post. And uh, when flesh meets steel, the steel oh, come on! In. JD again from the outside. Referee didn't see it. As the, uh, as the valet for Jed and Moore, not too happy in her own right, the queen of mean outside. But right now, the Mayhem Ministry has Thomas Moore in the wrong part of town. What is the tank going to go for here? Oh! Oleander just unloading on Thomas Moore in the corner. If this lasts for another minute or two, we're going to have new champions. The tank now got that power game. He's trying to utilize. And he just plants Big T in the center of the ring. And two... Just barely getting the shoulder up. And now deliberate chokehold by Oleander in the center of the ring. That's a big mistake. If he gets disqualified, he loses the straps. Well, you got to know that the ministry is just eagerly awaiting to get the three count here and get the tag titles. They feel like they need a win here tonight. It hasn't been the greatest night for them. Of course, their leader, Jackson White, the outlaw Jackson White, booted in the face by Congo Kong, carried off to some unknown location. Well, yes, he could have taken the outlaw to dinner. We may never see him again. But now, right now, uh, Sean Franklin, obviously not thinking about his fallen leader. He wants those belts, and he is cranking the neck of Thomas Moore for all he's worth, but the big T is fighting back. Elbows to the midsection there. And you got to wonder how Sean Franklin was even feeling that with as much girth as those shots have to make their way through. Well, he is certainly a powerful individual, no doubt about that. Big T trying desperately to get back to that corner. You see Hillbilly Jed has got his arm reaching out there for the tag. Yeah, he wants it in the worst way, trying to get back into this thing. But Thomas Moore is in dire straits, and he has an absolute bear of a man trying to rip his shoulder off. But look at him. He's fighting back up to his feet. A Pele kick out of nowhere. He caught the temple of Franklin, but the big guy's still on his feet. This could be his opportunity. He's just got to reach up. Oh. But no, Franklin dropping down with a horrendous shot to the back of the neck, but more getting out. Oh. I tell you, the, the Mayhem Ministry is a brutal, 
bruising unit, John Stone. But they're a smart unit. you got to give them credit for that. They know how to work somebody over in their corner. They know how to keep a man cut off from his partner. Yes, they are tag team technicians. Oh! That's why they are former champions. And Tank Oleander trying to rearrange the spine of Thomas Moore. But no, foot on the ropes. Good ring awareness. Absolutely. But another deliberate chokehold by Oleander. Yeah, but you see the frustration on the, the face of the Tank. You understand that they've been frustrated this entire time with this whole process of not immediately being given back their tag team championships, as they say they are. So I believe that this is getting to a point now where the frustrations are starting to manifest. They're starting to manifest in a physical form, and they're going to start making mistakes. John, you are absolutely right. But the, the, the determining factor here, I believe, may be our referee. Because we've seen Parker already go ballistic on one person tonight. And if he disqualifies the Mayhem Ministry for the deliberate choking that they're doing, then the good old boys are going to walk away with those titles. Oh! And Tank Oleander with a vicious clothesline trying to remove the head from the body of Thomas Moore. Now he's going up to the second rope. Uncharacteristic for the Tank. Well, this is desperation time. The Mayhem Ministry want those belts, and they want oh. them now. But nobody home off the high risk. Big T able to get out of the way just in time. All he's got to do is make the tag to Hillbilly Jed. He is desperate to get to that tag. Both men down. The straps are up for grabs. Jed leaning over the ropes, wanting desperately to get that tag from Thomas Moore. And he is closer than he's been in a while. All he's got to do is make the tag. Sean Franklin coming in. Can he make the tag? Yes! The tag is made. And Franklin. the two big... Huge men inside. Hill Billy Jed now the legal man along with Sean Franklin. He is working him over. These two. Oh, I'm surprised if the ring will stay together. Oh. As Jed with. And here comes Rolling Thunder. If he can. Oh. Good Lord. All of that massive frame coming down on top of Sean Franklin. And now the tank is fighting back. All four men inside the ring right now. Oleander off the ropes. Oh, he finally took him off his feet. And about a three on the Richter scale as Jed went down. Franklin coming out of the corner. Exactly. Remember, Franklin is the legal man. Yes, that's correct. Choking him with that second rope. And JD on the outside acting like he's not doing anything. Well, right now he's not, but the referee distracted, and exactly. there's the choke. Exactly, there it is, the referee distracted. JD becoming as much a part of this match as anybody else. Both Thomas Moore and Jed are down. Oh, wait a minute, Parker, our referee, getting into the face of Sean Franklin. We saw what happened in last time with Levi. I know, but Sean Franklin isn't a Jason Levi. Sean Franklin has a huge size advantage. And what is Whoa. Parker doing? That is insane. Referee or not, you don't want to do that to a man twice your size. But then again, he, he is the official, and if he decides to... Whoa. And once again, the referee's distracted, and J.D. is getting involved. The Look on the outside, wait! The Queen of Mean just assaulted J.D. And oh. gave him a forearm and knocked him out! Oh, now that's what I like to see! J.D.'s interference just outran him. As the Queen just clocked him. Oh! And a miss on a splash attempt by Sean Franklin. The big man almost went through the mat, and this crowd is behind Hillbilly Jed. Jed is starting to fight back up. You see, though, Big T hasn't even made it outside the ropes for his team. He's still down in the corner. Well, he took a shellacking, a beating like no other from the ministry. Uh, I'm surprised he's not back on his feet. But And Jed just realized that he lifted his head up. He saw he was still sitting in the corner. You can't make a tag unless you're on the outside. That's right. And at this point in time, Big T might not be any any condition to tag out. 
trading elbow shots and forearm shots in the ring. I am surprised that this ring is still standing with the pure pounding oh. that is in that ring right now between Jed and Franklin. The only enders in the ring still distracted as Sean Franklin just gave a rake of the eyes and now Tank gets away from the ref. What is Franklin doing? He's mounting the, the bottom rope there and just smashing forearms into the face. The referee, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, he's able to get him in the midsection. He's trying to throw him to the outside. Oh, Tank holy. is not the legal man. Tank just hit the deck. And now, whoa! Oh. Franklin was just peeled off of Big T. What is Hillbilly Jed going to go for here? He's setting him up in the corner. I have no idea, but he's telling him to go up. Oh, good Lord. Oh, no. The Hillbilly and Big T are both going to fly here. He's over 450 pounds. Are you kidding me? What a senton. Tank trying to get back in the ring. Good Lord, what a sh Oh! And a Samoan drop to boot. And With an elbow. elbow. We've got a double pin. And a oh! We've got new champions. are taking it back to the woods tonight. They are your New Wave Pro Tag Team Champions. And the there. Mayhem Ministry have been decimated here tonight. There is no arguing that outcome, no matter how much they're going to try. We saw the official one, two, three. The good old boys are taking the titles back home to Kentucky. Well, you got it right. The Big T Thomas Moore and Hillbilly Jed literally crushing the Mayhem Ministry here tonight. And I don't even think it's registered what just happened to the ministry. I mean, Jay, just his face. He well, he just got beat by a girl, John. I don't think that he's going to be looking in the mirror the same way tonight. Tank is mad. You can tell it. Tank is angry. Well, as well he should. He just lost a golden opportunity in the Mayhem Ministry have basically lost their power in New Wave Pro. What type of a ride are we going to be on now that the good old boys have the tag straps? I can't wait to see what happens. Unbelievable action, unbelievable match, and we will be back with our main event, two out of three falls. Stay with us. Everybody, Buckhouse Bob, live from the Armory Wrestling Show. Folks, I'm standing right here with Matt Hardy. That is my close personal friend, Matt. That's Mr. Hardy to you. When Matt isn't kicking ass, winning titles, and running the roads, he listens to one podcast, which is... And that is live from the Armory Wrestling Show, the best wrestling podcast going with my dear close personal friend, Bob Dell. Do not miss it every week. Tune in, 7 o'clock, Wednesday night.